Hello there and welcome back to Simon Outdoors Indoors in our new storage shed. The purpose of this video is to tell you about the canoe build. The canoe build is back on but uh, there is a bit of a catch. I did put it forward to my wife that I would have to try and do it so if people was interested in seeing it being built that you know there'd be some sort of way people could help with the build basically with materials um, but I think probably the best way is going to be if I could sell a few tinder pouches to have the money for the buying the materials for the plywood I'm going to build a plywood canoe I'm not going to have joints in the length of it so it's going to be a short canoe it's going to be about seven to seven and a half foot long because once I cut the sides out of the plywood and I want to bow them out, that's going to shrink the length of the canoe. So uh, the other day I did take some photos, I don't think I put them up on Instagram or Facebook, I just uh, sent them to a couple of friends who I've been talking about this canoe project to. I sat in my plywood trailer to see what I'd actually would fit into. Now the plywood trailer is under two foot wide and 500 deep. Now, I actually fit, fitted in there quite snugly, so it just goes to show me how to the sheet of plywood, if I rip it straight in half, because they're 8 foot by 4 foot sheets of plywood are, that uh, I'll be able to get the two sides out of one sheet. Now, 2 foot deep, you might think is pretty deep, but I do plan, after sitting in the, the plywood trailer, of putting a small seat in. Excuse me, itchy nose. <laughs> Um, I want an increased depth because the length of the canoe, I'm talking with my hands again, aren't I? Big fish, little fish, cardboard box. <laughs> I want a, a, a deeper canoe because it's going to be shorter, so I'm making sure I'm displacing enough water that it will take my weight and also some luggage. So the canoe is going to be built in here. Um, so. Let me just grab the phone and I'll give you a talk through. Okay, so looking back where I was, uh, where the camera was, up on that stand there, with the legs a bit like they were going to fall over. Um, I'll talk to you first about the plans for this shed. This door is fixed up so it's never going to open. It's bolted into the floor, into the ceiling. Uh, it hasn't even got the, the rollers on because of the chicken shed behind it, the door can't be opened. So, eventually, uh, when the electrics have been put in here, if I, if I can afford those, uh, when the quote comes through by a, a friend, the freezer is going to go there out the front room, and then from that corner... Oops, just tripping over my daughter's bike. Uh, to here is going to be a 12 foot shelf uh, or set of shelves so we're going to have storage under the bottom on the floor middle and then the top so we can put everything in stacking boxes and, and bring it in a friend has kindly given me his wood burner but I think I'm going to really struggle to find an adapter because I've been looking and I can find a, this is a 6 inch pipe I can find a 6 inch to a 5 inch adapter but I need a 6 inch to a 4 inch adapter so I can then take some flexible pipe and then take it out through this hole. This hole was made because the original owners had a condensing, uh, not a condensing dryer, just a normal dryer and the pipe had to go outside. So this will be brilliant in winter for keeping us warm and it also if you want to bring us animals in here I can light a small fire, put some coal in there, and uh, that'll that'll keep that nice and warm in here. So, there's a bike I've just fallen over. <laughs> Down here is the uh, pipe that goes out through the concrete for the electrics to come in. So I'll say I'm waiting on that. Um, we'll have a couple of tube lighting on. Not as many as what's in here now, fastened fastened up here, I'll just have one there, one the other side of that. Um, 
the light off with this should bounce back off this white wall the reason i did this wall white is because i was going to put a bench here uh, and, and video from here so i'd be spin the phone around i'd be sat here at a, a table doing videos talking talking about new products or making crafts and showing you how to make crafts well i'll spin you back around so the reason all the drawers are there and not in here is because in a bit when the electrics if i can afford to do them eventually go in there i can i can put this in the corner i don't want to block it up at the minute because then i've got to move it again but it won't stay here because if i'm putting anything in the vise i want to cut which is quite long it's going to hit the it's going to hit the filing cabinet just so so that's going to go over there and uh, a lot of this stuff's just been dumped on here when I moved it from the other shed. Uh, like stuff like the sander and bits and bobs will go onto the shelving. This is my drum that you've probably seen photos of that I use as an oven when I'm camping. And now the thermostat's come that I got off eBay for about £1.70 something. I've had to just bring my rucksacks in here because I'm getting kicked out of the kitchen because they did live under the stairs with the shoes but uh, now they've got to come and live in here. I've also got another bag, food bag that's got to come in but stuff like that will go into the shelving system. System? <laughs> the shelving when uh, that goes up. But I think probably first will be the canoe project. Possibly. I don't know. We'll just have to see how things go. Because if I'm getting the plywood for the canoe, I might as well get the plywood for the shelving at the same time. And uh, that'll keep the wife happy, knowing that I'm doing two jobs at once, multitasking. So, I think I about covered the plants for here. Like I said, the shelving's going to go down that side. We're going to have the freezer out the front room in here, because we don't have no room in the kitchen. It's only a tiny little two up, two down house that we live in. So luckily, there's a bigger enough garden to have sheds so that we can store the stuff we can't keep in our house. This is the anvil upgrade, courtesy to my same friend who gave me the stove. So it's a shame it's not flat. You could probably try really hard to grind that and try and get it sort of flat, but I'll just work on this flat edge I've got there. You've got about an inch sort of flat there. And the other day I was pounding on it because I was flattening washers to put under the stove and under the slabs to stop it from rocking. Uh, so that's that's stable now. I just need to sort that pipe out and I think that's going to be a real headache. So uh, I'll just leave that until we can get that sorted. Right. Well, thank you for joining me in the shed <laughs> for talking about this canoe i've got two workmates two different workmates i've got my father-in-law's um, workmate and one off my dad so when the canoe is set out on the floor so i'll get these bikes out of the way um we'll build it on well we'll we'll build it you'll we'll, you'll be watching me build it uh, as i'll be recording it um I'll build it on two workmates so I've got it high up so I can work on it. And I've already measured and checked with the tape measure that with it being seven and a half foot close, I want it the longest I can out of the sheet. Um, so I don't want to end, end up with a big 14 foot canoe. My Nissan Micra is 12 foot long. I did check with the tape the other day. And once I've built this canoe, I'll probably sit it on some sponge like we've got out here we've got sticking in there which is old play matting and also um, there's some materials left over from the old bike shed which was here and this has replaced it um, yes some pipe insulation I'll put that on the edges of the canoe for when it rests on my car so I can strap it down I've got some really thin ratchet straps and obviously I'll put some eyes on the front and the back of the canoe so that I can tie it to the front and back of the car so right well thank you very much for joining me Simon Outdoors
and talking to you about the plans for a canoe build. Once the canoe is built, I'll be doing some trips, um, obviously canoeing down canals, rivers, um, and I'll be doing some camping. So we'll just be pulling the canoe up at the side of the bank, clear some nettles, a bit of a rough wild area out the way, and have a camp, an overnighter, and then paddle back again. So, sorry about the shaking of the camera. <laughs> I'll hold it with two hands now. So, thank you very much for joining Simon Outdoors. Something just flew low over, but because of the low cloud, can't see a thing. That would have been great to have spot them. How dare they interrupt my film? <laughs> That's the RAF for you, <laughs> antisocial. <laughs> oh. Right then, thanks for watching Simon Outdoors. Take care and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.